married to a man who won't provide. Uh, so your guys' thoughts on the 50-50 wave. I'll just keep it with that short question. I don't believe in 50-50. Nothing in life is 50-50. Nothing in the world is 50-50. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Equality doesn't exist. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't. You look at nature, you look at anything in the universe, 50-50 is a myth. Right. If she's having a really bad day and she's touched out and the kids have been a lot and I come home from work and I'm at 80 percent and she's at two and I have to step in and run the house for the rest of the night and put the kids in the bath and do homework and all of that. There's no 50 50 there. Right. That's me stepping in and us working right. as a team. Mm -hmm. That 50 50 mindset is trash. Yeah. And it's what's causing I feel like it's what's causing divorces because you is. have these expectations. You're supposed to be meeting me halfway. But yeah. your partner exactly like they play to each other's strengths. Yeah. yeah, and that and that halfway is a cookie cutter m m thought process mindset. I almost got my words jumbled there. And women are expecting every single man across every single relationship to be able to do all of these things. Well, Sally's husband is an oil rig worker, and he's gone for six months of the year. Mm -hmm. And then Jessica's husband's a trucker, and he's only home on the weekends. So that 50-50, that 100% cannot work for every relationship the way that women think it can. Mm -hmm. I agree. I love that. So, yep. And I don't, I, right now I'm kind of, uh, I'm seeing how a lot of men want to be taken care of, like um, the roles are being switched. And why I don't believe in it completely is just because women do have to bear children. And mm. for I'm watching my little sister. I don't have kids, but my little sister is has been carrying a child for nine months, and she doesn't have to. Her man stepped up to work, and that's that trade off, right? Because she's over here passing out because she's uh, not getting blood to her heart, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, she's out of breath heavily. So to go to the workplace, the work field, and then she's gonna have to bring home this newborn baby yeah. and take care of this newborn baby, and she's gonna she's already losing herself so much mentally she's have brain it's just crazy what women have to go through we just dropped a postpartum episode if she wanted to check that out i did see clips okay. of it yes Good. i did and i'm gonna send it to my sister mm -hmm. um but the fact and he's working mm -hmm. right so that's the trade-off and so women think uh i think that right now we're not understanding that it's the i think the 50 50 the man going out and providing while the woman's at home that's a great 50 50 oh yeah that's great I mean, the way it was designed to be is a great trade-off, mm -hmm. you know? I don't I, – but see, that's not a 50-50 thing. The house is yours. The house if is I walked mine. in and you were like, take your boots off at the door and you got nasty about it, I'd, yes, ma'am, I'm going to take my boots off because she just mopped the floor. Mm. But I, I, there's not like um, – I, I just – I don't understand how that works. My, my job is to get it to the house and hers is to get it to the table. Mm -hmm. mm, like so that. if I don't provide, how can I expect her to cook my meals? Right. So like th that's a thing. But in, in what you started saying, you said that men are starting to become more wanting to be taken care of. That's the absence of fathers in a home. Mm. When you get when you have a single mother household raising a child and allowing that child to be taken care of until it's in its 20s, 30s, and it's still acting like a child, even though it's a man and right. not acting like a man, that's the failed father. Mm -hmm. So and that speaks on the destruction of a nuclear family. And, and, and that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. But that is men failing men. That's amazing. I think... So I hear the men wanting to be taken care of and I hear moochers. Yeah. <laughs> because all of the men that I've met who are okay with that lifestyle are exactly that. There is no ambition. There is no drive to do anything. They don't have any real goals in life. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the feminist wave, I affectionately refer to it as the feminazis, is what has pushed men into that mindset because at one point it was, no, let me take care of you. Let me provide for you. I got this. Don't worry about it. And that was met with, well, I can do everything you can do. I can do it and I can do it better. I yeah. don't need you. Right. Do it all by myself. And now it's become that placating is not the word. Once you beat a dog enough, they're going to stop trying to fight back. Does that make sense? Wow. Yeah, that's yep. true. So now they're, okay, you want this lifestyle, you live that lifestyle, babe, and I'm going to get a benefit out of it, too. Yeah. Wow. I like how y'all break things down. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still learning. <laughs> live I'm a live life I'm experience. A, yeah. So. I'm still a child in this, but I really want to utilize my podcast to talk about these agendas, you know, and so I'm just, I'm on the journey of reading books and mm -hmm. listening to people like you and just. And that's how we got here. And take it. Yeah. yeah. Autodidacts. We, we are yeah. also, we're self-educated. We, neither one of us have a degree in anything. I have a seventh grade education. Wow. Yeah. So. 
but I love the way you guys communicate. I love it. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's refreshing. It's so away from the just social media and how yeah. they talk and think, and it's just refreshing to listen. I I'm you guys are my like mentors in life. Like I just like watch you guys' stuff. And I'm like I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. I have full faith in you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm only t I'm 25, so I don't know how you go, your guys' age. But just the way you talk, I would think you guys are maybe older because I talk I'm wise. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't announce my age. You don't announce? No. no. That's just another thing for people to use against me. So. Mm, okay. I love it. Well, you guys, you guys are vibrant. Thank and you. And love it. Um, <laughs> my husband would love to be here. Man, I know he would have loved this conversation. Okay. So, um, so now moving on to the last one is the nagging wife. So... What is your guys' – hmm, I have a couple here. Let me think which one I want to choose. Mm, okay, I'm going to do this one. Add, uh, advice to a wife that wants her emotional needs met by her husband. Um, actually, no, I'm going to just do the first one. What are the traits of a nagging wife? What do you guys think the traits? I think you should do both of those. Both of them? Because that last one is – that second okay. question is a loaded question. Okay. All right. So first thing, when I hear nagging wife, I hear I have nothing else better to do in my day. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, it is. It's true. <laughs> it is. I view it as picking arguments to get some sort of emotional response to make you feel better about yourself. And the traits of a nagging wife, I am picturing you never, you always. I've told you this multiple times. I can't believe I have to mother you. I gave myself the ick <laughs> and I stopped in my tracks. There's a lot of a lot of miscommunication that happens yeah. in that. I think there's a lot of loneliness that's happening in that. And there are people who use use that type of um, manipulation to gain or to garnish energy and attention from their partner. Yes. And they don't realize that that's a self-destructive um, mindset. What was the name of that book? About uh, something prophecy. The Celestine Prophecy. Celestine Prophecy. Yeah. If you haven't read that book, you should read that book. Right, I'm going to need a list of these books. It's on, we, we actually have a <laughs> list on our website. Oh, okay, to, to be better .co, there's a download on there that's got the check-ins. All this is free. The check-ins, we have a courting questionnaire, um, a kid check-in, and then a, a recommended reading list. Yes. Um, we read audiobooks at two and three times the speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we ingest a lot. It. Yeah. And then when we get books that have a lot of golden nuggets, it goes on our list. Yeah. A lot of it gets rejected. There's been a lot of wasted reading time. But but in that book, they talk about the energy exchanges that can happen and how some people are energy vampires. Mm -hmm. And I would group the nagging wife into that. Yeah. Wow. That book is for fun read. That's not like a, a self-help book or yeah. anything. But I think there's nuggets in there that you can apply to self-help, yeah. though. The control drama is actually comes from Carl Jung, though. That is actually oh. psychologist. Okay. He was one of Freud's um, peers. Mm. So there, there is actual psychology behind that. but. And uh, just a comment, because I have two friends, and I've already told them this, that's why I don't mind, and they watch my stuff, and they can't wait for to learn more from me, right? But they're both, I would identify them as nagging wives, and both of them are stay-at-home women who aren't doing anything all day, just waiting for the man to come home, and both of them went through adultery. So <clears throat> with the with the same man that with they're the with man. now, okay, with their husbands. So it just like goes back to the what nagging. I said earlier. Yeah, I, what I you would, said earlier. I would view that nagging as a lash out to unresolved emotions. If they weren't the nagging wife before the adultery, yeah, I would go inward on that because that's a drastic change in character. Mm -hmm. Well, they were actually, I think, the na they were the nagging wife and then Prior the to adultery, him. but now they're still the nagging wife and they're afraid of him going out and doing again. And I'm over here like, hey, well, that's why he did it. Probably. Let's not. <laughs> yeah, let's not to keep doing the same patterns, right. <laughs> you know, because he's both actual men vocalized to them. I feel like I come home and you're just never Towards happy. Them. Yeah. You're always putting me down. Um, I it's exhausting. It's draining. You know, and what you said earlier, they just want a little bit of happiness. If I got to work, because both of them work, provide for the household, they do everything, you know. Um, and so I I agree with what you said. If I can get just a little bit of happiness outside of this, you know. Our home is supposed yeah. to be a sanctuary. It's the only place in the world where we're able to go and completely decompress. And if your home is a war zone, you don't want to go there anymore. Yeah. And yeah. at some point, you're going to realize that you can be miserable in a relationship or you can be miserable alone. 
and not have to deal with that shit when you get off of work and you're going to choose to be miserable alone. Oh, it's so much easier to deal with my misery than to deal with mine and somebody else's. Yeah. When I walk yeah. in the house and you stand at the door, like you, you know, you see me pull up on the cameras and you come and greet me at the door with a kiss and not, Hey honey, you need to go pull those boxes out of the attic. I know you just got home, but yard needs to be cut or any kind of anything. I get greeted with love when I come home from work and there's gratitude there. I'm going to go take a shower and then we're going to figure out our evening. Like there's a, that's a very different situation than coming home and having being met with just aggression. Nobody yeah. wants to have that. It, yeah. it becomes to the point where men will start finding reasons to not come home. Right. Yeah. That's why I loved when you, I came across that video and you said, when you get through the door, I take your boots off mm -hmm. and he just seems so happy. And you say, sir, I've been practicing that. I call yeah. myself a sir and I enjoy it. He's like, why you call me sir? I'm like, because you the captain. <laughs> what you are. And he loves it. He loves it. So um, I wanted that because my husband would not come inside the house. He would not come home. And I was like, wow, I just want to be the woman that he's just excited to come I'm, home too. now he calls me when he gets off work i'm coming home oh you want to watch our show yeah. and i'm like this is so amazing like yeah. i can't believe i fought this so much i fought this so i could feel powerful you know um i wanted to add on two things just real quick yeah of course to the women who were nagging before the adultery and are still after the adultery I'm going to challenge to you to every negative thought you have about your husband, write down three things you're grateful that he does for you. Yeah. That was one of the things that I did to switch my mindset. And then in regards to my husband saying that the house is supposed to be the sanctuary, our house is my husband's kingdom. I, you are not staying here. Sorry, you can get a hotel room or you can't come visit. If you act up in our household, it is not above me. I will... You want to see me as a see you next Tuesday? I would prefer that because you're not going to disrupt the energy of my home for my man. Mm, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. House is hers, though. It, that's her domain. I don't do anything in there. And, like, I have my whiskey room. You do. That's mine. <laughs> and I have my little work area. But the house is hers. If she's like, I want to do, I'm like, do it. I, this, is your, this is your domain. You make sure that I have the peace. I've, I've provided you the house. You've made it a home. Like, I don't have to worry about any of this. And she doesn't have to worry. Like, she doesn't know her car payment. She doesn't know how much car payment is. I handle all of that. Oh, we easy. don't have, I don't, just, what do you want for dinner? We don't do that either. I'm going to eat whatever she makes, even if I don't like it, because she cooked it. Like, there's mm -hmm. a, a gratitude that comes into all of this. And it, it makes it so that I don't have to make decisions. Right. She doesn't have to make decisions. We have, that's where that 50-50 comes in. She handles half of our life and I handle the other half. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. the combined living situation is whoever's got the energy to get it done. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what was that other question? Because I would like to answer that yeah, one before we course. wrap up. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, advice to a wife that wants her emotional needs met by her husband. Um, and then I added on to that who is exhausted from work and providing and not meeting her needs. You versus I statement is where my mind went to. That's where mine went to. As soon yeah. as she said it earlier, I was like, this needs to be a yeah. discussion. So you versus I statements. And that falls into the you always, you never. And turning it into I feel overwhelmed when the household looks a mess. Can you help me with that? That turns it from you never help me around the house. I can't believe you're like this. And that removes the blame. It removes the um, accusation of laziness or not contributing. And men by nature are fixers. Yeah. When I tell my husband, babe, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overstimulated, he immediately goes, what can I do to make it better for you? I find a phone booth and come out like Superman. Yeah. <laughs> because it gives me the opportunity to serve my wife, be her lead my household, mm -hmm. and be the protector, the provider, and like I'm the superhero in the moment. That comes down to, to articulating what you need right. and not throwing shade at your person. You hear people say you work too much. It's not that they work too much. It's that they, they're missed. You're not home very often. I miss oh. the times that we had. I miss the conversations. Mm -hmm. So instead of going, you work too much and you're never here, babe, babe I miss I you. Miss you. I, I, can we start doing date nights? Can, mm -hmm. can we start watching our TV shows on Wednesdays? Can we... Can we you know, start going to church again or, or whatever it is that we need to do to, to reconnect that is very different than you work too much. Right. So when you learn to articulate what you need versus throwing shade and making, like she said, accusations, you're going to get a very different outcome. Mm -hmm. Love makes requests, not demands. You start demanding things from people. I don't care who you are. You tell somebody what to do, see what happens. Right. Yeah. That's why I learned a DPT mm -hmm. is how to communicate yep. um, the root, not just the right. surface level. Yeah, the surface of everything. I would say a big component in all of that as well is the affirmation once. So 
I feel overwhelmed when the house looks this way. Can you help me do the dishes Wednesday night? Yeah. And then every single Wednesday night, babe, you look so sexy doing those dishes. Yeah. That reaffirmation of thank you for helping, the gratitude, the appreciation goes a very, very long way. And it also puts the pep in their step of, oh, she thinks I'm sexy doing the dishes. I might start doing them Friday nights now. Right. This is also how you train positive behavior. This is positive mm -hmm. reinforcement. It's you do it to children, you do it to dogs, everyone, mm -hmm. military. Positive reinforcement goes a long way. When you mess up in the military, you get screamed at. You do something right, you still get screamed at a little bit, but like <laughs> it's not as bad. So positive reinforcement goes a long way, and that's where that, that gratitude comes in. Those mm -hmm. positive affirmations let you be seen. If a woman is at home doing the housework thing and the house is spotless all the time and, and they never say, hey, I really appreciate the fact that I don't come home to a mess or a war zone, right. they're going to feel like they're being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. right. Why would you want to do that? At that point, you feel like a slave and not like you're serving your person. And right. there is a very big difference in that. But again, that comes down to being able to articulate and having an understanding of what the words mean. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love this. Thank you guys <laughs> You're so much. Yeah, thank you for having us. This yeah. has been a blast. Yeah, it has. I wish I could be with you guys for hours and um, and everything. And I don't know the next time I'm going to see you guys. So I just was trying to get in as much as I can in a short period of time. But I, I just thank you guys so much for taking the time. I know you're like this random girl wants us on, but I had yeah. to, I had to. And um, I hope that anybody watching, please go watch their podcast. Um, they're amazing. You heard a little bit today, but they have so much more. You guys have a lot of um, podcast episodes. So yep. just a yeah. lot to ingest and take in. Um, so I appreciate that so much. And uh, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. So we'll just wrap up with that, you guys. Um, you guys can check out my little ebooks um, in the link below, and I'll put the link on my YouTube channel to their podcast episode as well. And if there's anything else you guys want to promote or anything you guys got going on that you want to share before I wrap it up, probably the website because we mentioned the reading list and the check ins. Yeah. So you can find us on YouTube at To Be Better. I think it might be To Be Better podcast. I think it's To Be Better. I might be it's wrong. To on Be that. Better po across all platforms. Yeah. So you can find us that. It's uh, two chess pieces is our podcast. But I wanted to say that for men who are listening to this, to your podcast, um, I have started a standalone project called The Voice of the Broken that is under the To Be Better umbrella. And it is about men's mental health. And it is to address men who have gotten to the point of wanting to unalive themselves and then to talking about their successes because there are a lot of young men who do not have resources or mentors. Mm. Um, and that podcast, is it's young. It's only got like five yeah. or six episodes as of right now. Um, but that's it is part of the To Be Better thing, but it's its own thing. The Voice of the Broken on YouTube. I love that. Um, but we are trying to create a community of young men and, and older men who can be mentors to people who are going through things to try to help them get out of that darkness and into success. Uh, it, that's all free. It's all on YouTube. So. Wow, I love that. I appreciate you guys so much. And um, thank you again. So yeah, Of course. Thank um, you. Yes, you guys. I will see you on episode five. <laughs>